let me quickly make an introductions of individuals who are over here uh, i think most of us know each other somehow but uh, let me introduce mr sumit sharma he is program lead united nations environment program we are glad to have unep as partners for these conversations that we have been having focused on environment uh, next to him is mr sanjay kajuria he is senior vice president corporate affairs at nestle india uh, then we have tejashree joshi she is general manager environment at godrej and boys we have tusar ranjan patnayak he is corporate head ehs and plastic waste management at dabur then kitanjali was what's senior manager packaging sustainability asia australia new zealand unilever and we have suraj nandukumar he is chief executive officer and co-founder of free city network uh, i am ranjan rena i am director and chief strategist at cause because uh, the idea or say the thought behind coffee for cause conversations is primarily to just have stakeholders from the same domain together sit have conversations around the subjects the topics that are relevant that are somehow related to the environment or social responsibility of the organizations and this particular conversation primarily is focused on plastics if we look at uh, 2021 a lot of companies have been focusing on sustainability aspects the communications from have changed and a lot of businesses have been talking about going carbon neutral going waste zero waste so <clears throat> plastic is one of the essential elements in there we all know that plastic it's because of plastic that we are talking now metaphorically or otherwise as well plastic just cannot be eliminated so but there are uh, ways to reduce plastic consumption there are um, say strategies that have companies have putting in place to get the plastic whatever they are using in manufacturing or otherwise to put it in an economic circular economy model and make say uh, some business case around that uh, i'm sure Su- suraj will later on talk about the circular economy in plastic research uh, to lay the context of this conversation like how we came up with an idea and why we are talking about this um what we'll do i will just start in in conversational mode probably i'll just ask sumit sharma to mainly uh, lay the context start on the conversation give us the global perspective on how companies are talking about plastic or what are the things that they are doing around plastic waste management and then we can just move on anybody can raise hands and say okay i want to talk about my company or maybe you can tag one another and say okay uh why Uh, what Dabur has done, what Unilever is doing, or probably Suraj can talk about the initiatives that he's working on with the government as well as the uh, organizations. Uh, let me give you before we move on to Sumit. Let me give you a dynamics of this small group that we have in here. So I was just looking at the information that is in the public domain about all these companies that are around here. Unilever claims to have collected more plastic in Indian states in 2021 than they used in packaging. So that was the statement that was made by Unilever uh, recently. Dabur claims to have become a first Indian plastic waste neutral FMCG company in India. So we'll hear from Tushar about that as well. Godrej and Boys is founding member of India Plastics Pact and committed to continue offsetting its plastic quantities by 100%. Nestle made a commitment that 100% of its packaging will become recyclable or reusable by 2025. Then we have Recity Network here works with the government and corporate groups towards a circular economy of plastics and is helping a lot of these corporates as well as governments. on achieving these goals that they have set up so over to you sumit you can give us the context and global perspective on the plastic and then probably we'll just give clues to the participants here uh thank you thank you ranjan and a very good afternoon to all of you uh, i don't think we have met before but uh, i am i joined uh, unep last year only and before that i was working at terry uh, for for last two decades on uh, various environmental issues uh so here uh you know i was asked to handle this very important and emerging issue of marine plastics pollution and why i'm saying emerging because uh, you know it's it's not that uh, you know it has started uh, to become large now it has already uh, was there in in large volumes in different uh, environmental spheres but the momentum uh, to reduce to control this pollution is is uh, is is increasing day by day and uh, i will i will take you to uh, what has happened uh, two days back at the united nations environment assembly when the when the uh, 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 resolution uh, has been passed by uh, you know consensus of all the member states of united nations to control plastic pollution i'll i'll get into detail of this but let me uh, take advantage of uh, being the first speaker uh, in 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 this today's program 
and set this context on uh, you know marine pollution and uh, uh, as i said it is it is not a prog- problem which is which has started to trouble us uh, in last few years only uh, because uh, since 1950 if you see uh, you know in all about uh, 9 to 10 billion tons of plastics have been produced uh, it, is, it is only in last four decades it has uh, almost quadrupled uh, in numbers uh, uh, if you see on a year on year basis almost 10 mi- million tons of plastics are reaching oceans and uh, creating problems and and uh, you know we must understand that plastics reach oceans or river, rivers in different forms uh, we only think about big polythene bags or a, a plastic cup but uh, you know small uh, microplastics which are almost invisible invisible to our eyes are also reaching there and in fact the bigger ones are also getting photodegraded uh, in the form of uh, 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 microplastics and uh, these microplastics can be ingested by animals and then it can enter our food chains uh, becoming becoming more troublesome for humans now coming back to this marine pollution issue uh, and and that is the point where it becomes a global issue because we know uh, like air uh, oceans are also uh, interconnected and it is it is certainly not going to remain at a country level to control this issue because uh, you know some one country can be a polluter, but the sufferers uh, of that could be uh, the whole whole of the globe, and that's why you uh, you consider this issue as a global concern. However, actions are required at local, national, and and uh, you know continent scales. Now the problem starts with the fact that uh, uh, almost eighty percent of this marine litter, which we are talking about, is plastics, and uh, you know almost all of it, uh, almost eighty percent of it, uh, originates at land. And we know that the recycling rates of plastics are extremely low. Uh, uh, in India, it is somewhat better, but to talk about the whole uh, world, uh, it is it is not something which is very. Now, in India, we know as as we say that recycling is somewhat better, uh, and in fact, our overall plastic consumption is actually uh, quite quite less if you compare it with the world average. But the way we are growing, the way our population is growing, the aspirations are growing, the economy is growing. It is going to become even more uh, worse in terms of uh, overall generation of mismanaged plastic waste. And as per estimates, uh, what we what we know now by now is that India is the twelfth highest contributor to the overall mismanaged plastic waste in the world. And if we grow by the same rate, uh, we can we can hit the fifth rank by the year 2025. Uh, impacts. Uh, let let me just uh, spend few seconds on it. Uh, we generally think uh, plastics as an aesthetic issue. Uh, you know, plastics lying here and there, littered uh, on our beaches, and that does not look good. But that's that's the very small part of the problem. The problem starts when uh, when when it starts to impact the ecological systems, the marine ecological systems, the riverine ecological systems, when <coughs> biodiversity is impacted. And uh, you will be surprised. There are PhD theses which which are telling us now that uh, you know the the dung samples of uh, say elephants in 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 protected areas are found to be contaminated by uh, plastic particles. Uh, there are reports which are telling us that almost uh, everyone is is ingesting five grams of microplastics on a weekly basis. Not just this; it also contributes to. Uh, uh, you know, greenhouse gas emissions. And there are estimates that if you grow in the same manner by 2040, almost one fifth of the total global uh, carbon budget can be attributed to plastics production. Then there are other other impacts of, you know, what we see in the monsoons, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the drains gets clogged and then impact on uh, landfill leachates and all these kind of things. Uh, and and that's what is concerning to to India, to several countries, and now to the whole world. And that's why uh, uh, United Nations, uh, you know, Environment Assembly, which is the highest level where all the member states are sitting on the same table and discussing various issues, have now adopted a resolution two days back, uh, which is known as the End Plastic Pollution towards an international legally binding instrument. Now, what it means is that uh, for the next two years, negotiations will happen between different countries to decide what kind of an agreement which can be brought in onto the table uh, so that all nations can work towards reducing 
uh, plastic pollution in their own countries. Uh, India, in, in India, I, let me also just touch upon uh, the fact that UNEP is working very closely with the government of India at central level. Uh, we are assisting them on, on several studies related to alternatives, to recycling capacities and sustainable packaging. And we are also working with, this, with the state governments of Uttarakhand, UP and Bihar, developing state level and city level strategies for pollution control. Uh, let, let, let me just stop here, uh, 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 Ranjan, and uh, you know I, I, I can uh, always come back uh, with, with what is coming from this. Thank you, Sumit. There were like interesting facts. Uh, five grams of plastic being consumed by all of us on a weekly basis. It's, it's quite interesting. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't know about that as such. And of course, thank you for updating us on this international treaty or the agreement that to end plastics that the world has come together. So uh, before I move on to uh, somebody else to ask them about uh, their initiatives as such towards it, should we all, do you think uh, we are also expecting to have uh, some regulations or maybe some stringent norms coming up for corporates in the coming days with this agreement being signed at the international level? You're talking to me, Ranjan? Yes, Sumit, yes. I'm asking <laughs> okay. you. Yes, <laughs> See, I must tell you that India is not lagging behind in terms of its regulations. See, the way our Prime Minister has you know, gone ahead and made this announcement almost two, three years back that we'll ban SUPs and then coming up with the you know required notifications and this recent one on epr which has come last month is a, is a very clear indication that india is not going to sit idle on this and we are already placing very good regulations on on the table to control this issue i think the problem which india encounter at some point of time is of implementation of these regulations how you're going to enforce this what will be the monitoring mechanisms to ensure that the compliance is really happening on the ground or not. And uh, I think that is, uh, uh, is something which is going to challenge us uh, more than, than setting new targets uh, based on the global team which we are talking about. Thank you, Sumit. Uh, Sanjay, I, I, I want to come to you now. Uh, we've heard from uh, Sumit, we know about uh, the stringent rules and uh, say, they say, they say what we say, the uh, indicators of plastic usage as such by the governments will be coming in soon probably and there are also some stringent norms in there uh, but it's also a responsibility or say a, of a corporate and we have already talking about whatever is being used or say being consumed at the, at the corporate or being produced at the corporate it's going back and we want to go to plastic neutral by 2030 or something so what what are the initiatives there at nestle probably you can just give us a perspective on that and then tag probably unilever or tower like how they're also working on the same yeah, so thanks a lot, Ranjan. Uh, first of all, I think uh, thanks for inviting. I think it's a it's a group of friends, and we yes. we are all part of one group or the other. So we keep talking. Uh, so me, thanks a lot. You know what what you explained, and I think going forward uh, we will see a lot of uh, developments coming in. So Ranjan, to your point, I would actually put it in three four broad heads. So one, as you mentioned in the beginning itself. Uh, we are committed to be 100% recyclable or usable by 2025. And I'll explain what, what it really entails. Second is to use, you know, whatever minimum requirement of plastic for the product packaging. Reduce virgin plastic usage. Again, you know, uh, my colleagues on the call are already aware that uh, Food Authority has also passed regulations on RPET. It is now pending before BIS and hopefully it will get uh, uh, notified soon, which will again open a window of using less virgin plastic. Third area, which is very important, and we work very closely with Suraj on that, is really to make sure that the governance models, they become applicable. See, end of the day, as you said, everyone has a responsibility in this area. So I will talk a little bit about our project Hildari, maybe a little later, but that I want to park here at this stage. Uh, we are also uh, happy to report that since 2020, uh, Nestle is a plastic neutral company in India, which really means that the quantity of uh, post-consumer plastic waste which gets generated, we actually manage uh, the similar or more quantity. You know, so a lot of initiatives are going on 
uh, and i'll really pick up two three uh, because i don't want to take more time but we will get into this discussion more so one is you know how to make sure that the packaging which is being used is easy to recycle so between plastics also and my colleagues here know there are some which are easy to recycle some which are more difficult to recycle so we are on to this journey of using the plastic which is easy to recycle you know mono materials and so on and so forth wherever possible you know take plastic out replace it with other things like glass or metal that's another initiative which is going on uh, i'm sure many of you know but um, matter of great pride for us is that our ready to drink products like milo and nescafe we took out the plastic straws and replaced it with paper straws and 30 million of these so huge initiatives going on uh, at some stage i also want to talk to uh, you and the group about the consumer behavior changes and what are corporations doing about it also how all stakeholders when they get together ranjan magic happens and suraj i'm sure is going to pick it up uh, we are actually working on this model in five hill, hill cities and one beach which is dalhousie nainital masuri munnar mahabaleshwar and goa and the changes which we see there when all stakeholders get together are amazing and i will take this opportunity to talk a little bit about that in the later part of the discussion sure thank, thank you sanjay uh, gitanjali i quickly coming to you uh, you would also have a perspective like there are a lot of uh, initiatives by unilever as well in this domain and like sanjay mentioned when the all stakeholders come together uh, i'll i'll come to that part as well probably in the later part of the conversation but you can talk about some of your initiatives at unilever i think uh, first of all thank you for uh, having me on this uh, such a prestigious forum and uh, i want to congratulate uh, sumit and yunup on the milestone uh, step that uh, you went took and it is um, it is something which we have been working from the unilever end as well in a very big way and really really excited for this to actually materialize um, <clears throat> now coming on to uh, the you know the discussion that we are having in terms of what are the few initiatives i would say uh, you know uh, around uh, around 2017 i think we were the first organization to talk about uh plastic commitments and when i say plastic commitments they meant uh, the entire gamut of it starting really from that uh we that by 2025 all packaging and this when i say i'm not talking about uh, hul at all on behalf of uh, unilever as well that we would be converting all of our plastic like 100% of it into reusable recyclable and compostable formats that's the most audacious task task which the team has taken and we have been publishing uh, you know uh, annually in terms of the progress of that as well externally then the second topic we talked about was uh, while it's important to uh, you know bring circularity it is also critical to control and curb the problem at uh, source which is essentially reducing the plastic foot, uh, you know virgin plastic footprint as well now while you reduce there are other ways which we can do uh, which is about increasing more amount of recycled content in our packaging which we said that we will do minimum 25% across our packaging portfolio which is which at that point in time was the most difficult thing and i'm uh, now really feel you know excited about that uh, when you really set up such targets how you really bring the external ecosystem around uh, you know along with it and how the infrastructure then develops around that so now there are many recyclers who are actually you know finding value in waste converting into recycled content and then we are putting it back in our packaging again thus creating the most circular model that we could and the third bit that we talked about was that how can we uh, look at the collection with my uh, you know fellow colleagues also talked about sanjay talked about it and uh, you know in detail that how uh, plastic neutrality is extremely important that whatever amount of packaging that we put out it's important to uh, take uh, you know to manage that in the most environment friendly way that's the most important thing that we as uh, corporates can do and uh, that's something which as uh, hindustan unilever we have achieved as of 2021 as well so these are the few things i would say uh, while uh, they might look just a you know three prong approach but it really covers the entire gamut of uh, plastics that how we can 
reduce them how we should recycle them use more of recycled content across our packaging and then take care of the waste as well that we require so i think uh, that's the approach that we have stuck on to and uh, we're really putting in every effort that by 2025 we are able to reach that and uh, you know uh, really prove it to uh, and inspire this is improving i would say rather inspire other companies along with us who would like to learn and understand that how are we doing it as well so that's and i think one such forum that we have now uh, in india is that is the india, india plastic pack uh, for which hul is also one of the founding members and how we are leveraging the uh, you know the collaborative action groups that we have there and which are set across all these four targets uh, which i talked about uh, and looking at really into the most minutest way and then committing it externally that yes we would go after these uh, in the more robust way and uh, you know show the government uh, whom we are partnering uh, effectively now as well and in future as well that how these things can really materialize so i think that's uh, something that i would wanted to say thanks kitanjali yes it sounds sound sounds good yes india plastic pact you mentioned uh, for this tejashree I'll, i'll come to you because uh, you are also founding member i think cottage and boys also founding member of india plastic pact so uh, tejashree over to you you can talk about initiatives and also like detail a bit more about this plastic pact what exactly is it and uh, how should a common consumer like me who doesn't know much about how corporates operate how their packaging goes what is the supply chain like a uh, plastic mean to them and then we'll go to tusar patai and talk about their uh, claim around uh, being zero plastic waste company over to um, you tejashree yeah thanks thanks ranjan and thank you for having me here uh, so uh, let me begin with uh, you know the whole talk about plastic so at uh, godishan boys uh, plastic being one of the waste streams that uh, or resource streams if i may call it now uh, basically we have always looked at how do we uh, reduce in terms of uh, the generation of waste that is optimizing on material use basically and uh, looking at uh, you know eliminating those kind of uh, material streams which actually go out of the system and then uh, go and pollute the environment and plastic is one of those streams that i would mention so uh, we have always had this focus in terms of being kind of zero waste and maximizing the recycling aspect but uh, post the uh, rules which came into in the country on the plastic waste and the epr obligations uh, what we the approach that we have always taken is uh, try and go beyond the mere com- compliance needs and uh, we, so again like um, you know uh, gitanjali also mentioned i think uh, we started with uh, looking at uh, basically identifying and eliminating the wasteful plastic use so it started with that so it is one thing is on the um, responsibility that a corporate has in terms of managing its uh, plastic footprint the other is basically reducing that so there are many places that we found that there is a lot of uh, wasteful use or uh, overuse of packaging and we started with that so uh, bringing down what we are using as packaging uh, 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 the use of plastic then looking at uh, how do we reuse those plastic uh, packaging plastic within uh, within our frameworks to the extent possible so that uh, ultimately you know it is uh, less of the plastic is going out of the system uh, out of our our uh, uh, control and premises and then uh, ending up outside um, into the environment uh, we also looked at are there substitutes for uh, plastic packaging so all these has been our uh, initiatives over the last 3 years since 3 uh, or 4 years we have, we have we have been doing the epr so switching on to more biodegradable more uh, compostable uh, uh, you know, material for packaging uh, where we can eliminate the use of plastic that's been our third uh, uh, you know focus area we have also uh, tried and uh, phased out the use of non recyclable plastic many places there were multiple uh, say multi layer plastic use which probably was not really required at that uh, in that particular uh, use and so we now what we have been able to do is restrict it to a very specific uh, uh, area requirements and uh, phased out most of the use of non recyclable type of plastics from our use and um, we have also now focusing on uh, maximizing the recycle content but uh, this is not all what we have also uh, focused on while we did our obligation to uh, our plastic footprint um, and i am very happy to share in fact we have kind of been uh, if we talk about how much we are offsetting against uh, what is the plastic we have used for packaging and put out in the 
markets uh, since uh, 18 since the uh, financial year uh, 1920 we have been kind of plastic negative in that sense so we have been actually uh, recycling more plastic than we are putting out but our approach uh, has been that to have this recycling or this obligation done uh, uh, which is uh, which is focusing on all the types of plastics we are using and not just going for a certain type which is easily available or uh, you know easily recyclable or out there in the market and which can be very uh, easily done but we have tried and categorized into all the types of plastic use and inventorization of we are, what we are using and uh, taking focused uh, targets in terms of achieving recycling recycling for all those types uh we have also uh, focused on supporting the development and boosting this particular ecosystem in the country and how we have done that is basically we have always set a target for um, uh, equitable geographical spread uh, uh, across all the states that we have uh, we are doing business and not have uh, focus in certain regions where it is easier to find recyclers and partners to do this but uh, we have uh, emphasized and worked with our partners to spread this across the country and i'm very happy to share that over the last 3 years from being uh, doing this in just uh, four states we are now scaled up to doing it across uh, 31 states and indian territories working with uh, urban local bodies uh, with uh, waste management aggregators and partners and for all the types of plastics that i mentioned and um, the whole approach is always being to go beyond uh, you know just mere compliance and do see what we can do better in that context uh, in terms of moving uh, uh, to the uh, basic only requirements so um, and while doing that you know we also uh, came across this uh, india plastic pack and uh, godrajan boys very extensively works with uh, cii in all many of the sustainability initiatives um, mr jamshed godraj is a kind of a thought leader in the manufacturing space how many times did you use plastic today Plastic packaging is often wasted after single use. So, there is more plastic in nature and it is littering urban and rural ecosystems. What we need is a systemic shift in the design, manufacture, use and disposal of plastic packaging. We need a world where plastic is valued and does not pollute the environment. This is the ambition of the India Plastics Pact. The India Plastics Pact is engineered to help businesses keep plastics in use and out of the environment through these four targets. Eliminate unnecessary and problematic packaging. Ensure that all packaging is reusable and recyclable. Enhance the reusing, collecting and recycling of plastic packaging. Encourage the use of increased recycled content in packaging. The India Plastics Pact is led by the WWF India and CII in collaboration with RAP. It aims to put a circular economy for plastics in motion by bringing together stakeholders from across the plastic packaging value chain to collectively achieve the long-term targets. The India Plastics Pact wants to manifest a future which boosts demand for recycled content. drives investments in recycling infrastructure creates jobs and livelihoods and encourages innovation research and development the india plastics pact is the first of its kind in asia and joins a growing network of pacts globally join us to reimagine plastic build a circular economy stand by nature and create a world that is mindful of how packaging is designed used discarded and reintroduced join the india plastics pack today and help make a cleaner greener india because together we can so all these principles that i was talking about quite align to what uh, the india plastics pack were proposing to put forward so uh, this basically pack is uh, based on the circular economy principles of allen macarta foundation uh, uh, and based on the new eco- plastics economy principles and um, this was one of the first kind of packs in asia already there are some other packs in the uh, uk in um, you know the other uh, regions of the world but in asia this was uh, proposed to be one of the first 
act where uh, the whole intent was to bring together the ecosystem to increase the reuse collection and recycling of packaging and uh, you know uh, try and see how it uh, how we eliminate this packaging or the plastic going out of the uh, recycling stream or uh, uh, or management stream and goes out uh, avoid going for it to go out in the environment so uh, so the pack then defi- defined four focus areas uh, in terms of what they intended to do and again like it aligned with us because it also spoke about uh, defining the list of unnecessary or pl- problematic plastic packaging and i already mentioned that was our focus area and uh, therefore to take uh, these items and take measures to address them through redesigning through innovation making design level changes and how do you substitute that use the other focus area and what it talked about at, uh, is you know try and make your plastic packaging to be 100% reusable or recyclable so like i was saying you know you eliminate uh, uh, those kind of problematic plastic packaging which are not reusable or recyclable so again uh, this was a focus which aligned with our principles it also uh, tries and promotes more recycling so uh, there are certain targets that the pack is uh, uh, mentioning say like i said 100% uh, pa- plastic packaging to be reusable recyclable 50% of plastic packaging should be effectively recycled and uh, then have at least 25% of recycled content across all plastic packaging so all these were aligning to our uh, kind of goals and we thought uh, it was a good um, idea to be one of Uh, uh the founding members of this along with all uh, you know enlightened corporates like uh, i have my colleagues over here and uh, uh, so uh, that and it's it's kind of supporting our intent and i I'm, i'm sure the india plastics pack being uh, will bring that knowledge from outside which probably currently uh, we are struggling to find in the country or those insights and those experiences where which other packs have experienced while driving this in their own uh, countries and that will help all of us to develop this ecosystem to um, and bring together you know uh, the stakeholders who would help uh, uh, all all of us achieve these targets that we are setting for ourselves right let us see you know uh, i'll again come back to you uh, sure. you know, before uh, we move on to to sar and ask about the dabar's initiatives i want uh, uh, it's like i'm curious so the keywords here are uh, identify what all these kinds of plastic do we have and where all we are using it in the packaging then uh, how much it could it can be made reusable or recyclable Uh, how much of it can be eliminated so i have a question for you before we move on to the sir uh, it's primarily uh, can you give me an example of any product that used to have a plastic which could be eliminated or any 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 area within godrej and boys that could be eliminated and you have done with it yeah so uh, see um i'll tell you what godrej and boys challenge of godrej and boys is uh, we have 14 businesses and 14 business units have very varied kind of products like it starts from manufacture of locks to manufacturing of components for uh, the india's defense programs or our aerospace programs so you can see the plethora of kind of products that we have and then we have consumer electronics as well as we have our uh, furniture business and every product has a different kind of packaging that it goes out with but uh, having said that you know at every point of time or every product we have tried to redesign so i'll tell you very simply um, uh, for locks as a, as a product like a locks uh, what we have done is we have completely uh, switched over from you know Uh, a lined kind of packaging uh, a say a simple cardboard box which had a multi layered uh, uh, box where there was a cardboard and then a thin uh, uh, plastic sheet uh, we have switched over to completely uh, biodegradable cardboard uh, recycled cardboard box what we have also done is switched over from uh, the use of printing from multi being multi color to a mono color uh, kind of printing which you know the whole idea is to make the packaging more and more recyclable so this is one example another example i can cite is in uh, one of our products that we have uh, uh, our uh, refrigerators or our furniture there are many packaging uh, sheets uh, eps sheets or thermocol sheets which are required for packaging the product so uh, we have looked at honeycomb structures we have looked at uh, hard cardboard uh, uh, structures which are uh, which are itself produced using recycled uh, cardboard at the same time uh, what we have also done is in certain places where there was epr uh, where there was uh, foam being used we have replaced it with a recycled panel which is uh, recycled from using multi layered uh, uh, plastic packaging 
so uh, you know uh, uh, by uh, um, hot hot press and other uh, aspects uh, other methodologies of manufacturing so basically using the recycled plastic itself as packaging uh, which was otherwise would have ended up in uh, uh, you know um, uh, a cement clean or some other destruction methodology purpose, purpose primarily was to, uh, to get a layman a perspective as well like if they are saying we have eliminated plastic whereas it been eliminated so cartridge locks do not have that uh, recyclable or say absolutely absolutely refrigerators that we are buying does not have that layering that it used to have so that's how it has been eliminated over yes. to you sir uh, we are claiming to be plastic neutral plastic based no uh, what exactly do we say we have got zero plastic now uh, at dabar right somehow I, i think i should just go back to what you were saying uh, have become first indian plastic waste neutral company right uh, the same was uh, something claimed by unilever as well as well as uh, almost by nestle too so what, what do we exactly mean by giving waste plastic neutral that, does it mean that the plastic that is being uh, Okay, let, let's just hear it from you. <laughs> you're you're on mute, too, sir. Uh, thank you, Ranjan, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. I think uh, I feel proud that giving this opportunity in this forum. This is really in any of the other forums also we are meeting each other, any of the directly or indirectly. So this is good platform. Just uh, first uh, giving this concept of plastic neutrality, where when the Dabar is declared the plastic neutral company. if you see the concept when the epr is coming out it is it is to be divided into two parts so i am first of it talking about the compliance which is issued by ministry of environment in terms of epr compliance so epr compliance is saying that whatever the plastics is procured from the market and whatever you are selling to the market so in that condition whatever you procure from the market and selling to the market 100% we are collecting from the market that's first concept we are talking as a plastic neutral is not doesn't mean that you are not using plastic yes as per the compliance whatever you procure from the market that much of liability we are taking from the market taking into recycling taking into co processing taking into other aspects so that's we what you declared as a plastic neutral company about the talking about the plastic neutral we are doing these things in terms of beyond the compliance if you see the current notification of ministry of environment and forest starting from a target of a year of 21 and 22 with 25% next year this year uh, financial would be 70% and next year will be 100 we are go beyond the compliance we are not talking about 25% or 70% or 100% whatever you plastic procured from the market we are collecting from the market and this journey has started from 2017 18 first year we have done at least uh, a 20% next year 40% next year 54% now this current financial year at 20 21 and 22 we have almost crossed 27000 ton metric ton which is the plastic neutral we is far go ahead the plastic neutrality of that that's why i have declared as a plastic neutral the second year this is first part which you have done from 2017 the journey you have started and we have almost today we are operating it almost all the states are nutis of across the india collecting all this plastic from various states because as for the requirement when you are working in more than two states you are selling your products across the states so across the states we are collecting plastic through our 10 we have engaged 10 waste management agency in our system who has very very reputed waste management agency across this india and directly or indirectly with engaged with your urban law urban local authorities waste management agencies recyclers co processors rag pickers company is not only collecting the plastic and sending to the recyclers other way taking the social and environmental to the also aspects to the environment because any way you are engaging with the rag pickers giving the employments to them and while will sending to the recyclers and co processor that means you are reducing your carbon footprint so dabar as a company is working not only as a compliance on it here it is working in a sustainable approach for the plastic management to the organization this is what we call as a first bucket the plastic neutral second terms while we are working this basing upon 3r approach reduce recycle approach we are working like we are talking about 
because today if you see within these two three years everybody is talking about plastics plastics or plastic if you see any of the conferences three four years back we are discussing about other topics why today is a focus area because our honorable prime minister are taking their steps by so much of renewable energy by 2050 clean india by 2017 these are the very very global sustainable initiatives has been taken now the focus area everybody is talking about plastic is it doesn't mean that plastic but now we have to adopt the sustainable approach how to eliminate the plastics how to reduce the plastics how to the recycle plastics for that journey we have to take three steps for the government policy and mechanism this is very good initiative i can say taking by corporate because the epr journey if you start most of the prominent companies have started if you see today also in central pollution corporate registration board only 319 registered companies is there but if you see in india there are more lakhs of lakhs of industry and people are operating in various parts of the country today we have to be visualize and we have to be a database how many companies is operating in india and how many plastics they are creating or littering to the environment that data is not at present at anybody with us has to making the policy more more stringent that means the, if you see the new notification i think by 31st of march and the new portal is come out the government has taking many initiatives once the portal will come out the visibility will be more better that means it is not only the corporate big big companies that doing small small companies also come into picture that is the first thing when the everybody will come into picture that means whatever they will create the liabilities in the market first they have to do with the epr things that means your first the littering because why you are talking about plastic is a environment hazard because it is littering either to a ocean whether to rivers whether to ponds or nullers so when the first policy will be stringent the first point will be control second part in dabar we are working also in reduction of plastics reduction by your reduction of the virgin plastic ultimately the plastic pollution will be minimized so now in plastic packaging there are three stage one is primary packaging one is secondary packaging and tertiary packaging touching the primary packaging is slightly difficult and challengeable for any other company but what steps we have taken in dabar we are focusing on a tertiary packaging tertiary packaging the wrapping which is done in that so we are trying to reduce the first tertiary packaging so once you reduce the tertiary packaging that means the reduction of plastic will start decreased then we'll focus on the secondary packaging then we'll come out in the primary packaging so many things are on the pipeline and our team is dedicated team is working so that whatever the target the apart from the epr the second target which is given by government from 2025 26 recycled plastic contain on the three category of plastics rigid plastic you have to go for 30% flexible plastic you have to go 10% and mlp you have to go 5% if you see the targets which is given by government not of in any of the global companies because are been associated with many of the european governments or anything this is a very very stringent target looking at the current positions of india in structure in the infrastructure in terms of technical capability seems to be the target is very very challenging yes when there is a challenge but there is a lot of opportunity is there so definitely we with this kind of conferences and collaboration with the people in india and outside india how we can go to the recycled content why the recycled content is challengeable because this is challengeable because then in india the most most farmers thing is is not, so waste is not collected from the source where the source segregation will be done this will be more easier to plastic recycle content or recycling will be more easier while this concept is very very robust and comes in japan in the if you go in japan we have what you discussed to me many of the people their source segregation is very very stringent apart from this epr apart from the three r approach dabar is doing another approach is a my 10 kg campaign many people know in the site this my 10 kg campaign we have started just 3 years back i'll hold you 
Nishan, I'll hold you here. Uh, this My 10 kg campaign, it's an awareness one. I'll come back to you on this because we'll, I'll ask everybody on the awareness perspective. Uh, the very relevant point that you made was made by you is like, it's just not the large corporates that have to look at the plastic waste management. It's also the smaller uh, stakeholders, smaller companies which are using more plastic and they might not even have resources to use alternatives and get into identification, elimination, recycling and reusable plastic. Uh, Suraj, you are working in this domain for quite some time now and you have been able to connect several dots already. Uh, you have corporates on board, you have a working model at several places with the government as well. Uh, what's your perspective on this? Primarily first connecting the dots, getting all the stakeholders together. And then what are the alternatives that you have been able to provide? So talk, talk us, talk to, uh, let us know about the model that you've created around circular economy of plastics. Let's start from there. Sure. I mean, thank you for having me here. But I think it's a very exciting time to work in plastics in India. I mean, back in 2016, when the conversations were ripe, uh, everybody was in principle trying to figure it out, how to make this change. But today, when you speak to everybody, the conversations are very, I mean, people have measured what matters, you know, and there's been significant change in the thought process and number of items. Because primarily, if you look at the government mandate is there, if you go down to the street, and if you speak to a chai a person as well, and he'd say, Swachha Bharat is something that he recognizes. So there is a very strong willingness on the ground for people to improve the quality of life. Second part is that brands have made significant investments in the research, in collaborations, in efforts to kind of revive their products. There is that kind of pull factor. If you go speak to the state governments, they have very stringent targets and mandates to kind of fulfill this conversation. If you go speak to commissioners of cities, there is a very earnest desire to participate or to push the initiative forward. If you go and speak to a waste worker, that is where the fun part starts. Is because right now there is e-shrum card, there is an occupational ID, there is an awareness that there is a value in participating in these kind of conversations. And then we go to speak to the political uh, part and the administrative part. There is an awareness, there is a target, and there is a willingness to participate in activities like this. So the model in essentially, if you put it to this, is one is collective change. When I am as a citizen of India standing in a city, and when you want to make a concerted change at the ground level, when these kind of climate or environment exists, making that tangible change becomes possible. And to make that change, you need to be... Uh, these kind of initiatives or thoughts need to be invested and believed in into also, right? So back in 2017, Mr. Sanjay Kojurya was the first person who believed in us. And that is how the birth of Hindari did happen. The foundation of the idea was to bring the waste worker, the commissioner and potentially an MP of a pertinent legislation on the same table to bring a collective change. Because when does change happen? When a subject becomes priority. Back in 2016, the subject was not priority. I think when you leave your house, when you shut your house, that's where you keep the garbage outside and somebody is supposed to pick it up. The conversation became relevant when all these stakeholders, why is an MP speaking about waste? Why is a commissioner speaking about waste? Why is a waste worker? Suddenly all these different people became relevant. Now, collectivism has to be followed with a, a theory of change, right? There has to be a measured impact in what you do. So, uh, so there was a, that was a structure of Hildari and the second part was a systemic change. You can withdraw material from a city, but that does not mean that it will continue to be withdrawn, right? Somebody has to enable that. And that muscle memory in a city, how do you create that? Like Mr. Tushar was saying uh, that sex, where is it collected from the source? The only important relationship in waste is the relationship between a consumer and a waste worker. That is the first point of interaction. At that point, if waste is mixed, it has no value. If it is segregated, it has tremendous value. Brands, so many ecosystems are coming together to create such a robust infrastructure for recycling, even food grade recycling. But our major challenge is at the collection level. No? There are, if you take any city per se, there are uh, hundreds and thousands of waste workers working. There's an entire fleet operational. There are aggregation centers where waste has been sorted, bailed and then sent to recyclers. So a good 60% of the major hard work happens. Now, the moment you take this and you extrapolate it on a hill, the distance covered by that uh, by uh, Sumitra to 
climb five stairs five floors of stairs to collect that package versus that effort taken by somebody in in a beach city to go deep into the ocean or somewhere there to collect the challenges become different and that is the unique complexity that india has we cannot apply one step a cookie cutter approach so a combination of collective change and systemic change the systemic change i'll just end with this last point cities are the premise in which consumption is maximum so our teams at recity bring in a city planning approach helping the urban local body identify the land there is waste everywhere but there is no land for waste and lands are allocated through an instrument called as land use so creating a waste management land use to site an aggregation facility to place a bin nobody wants a bin in there everybody wants a toilet but not in front of their house so <laughs> having that negotiation and mediation ensure that place is created second is creating a governance model like mr kajuria was speaking at a ward level there has to be a conversation no at a at a lane level at a city level if people don't if the conversation initiator is only us then how will it last so passing that ownership from the intent to continued impact is something where the governance model comes place second is waste worker professionalization one waste worker easily addresses roughly 150 way property units if on foot 150 into 4 is the impact of the that the waste worker has in a city now if you work on select number of waste workers they can yield tremendous amount of outcomes for long term project realization third fourth is supply chain streamlining even if you segregate at source you collect segregatedly if it gets mixed on its way the entire utility utility of the purpose is lost so bringing together in a city waste works like clockwork 9 o'clock in the morning waste is picked up then it is put into a van then it is kept segregated goes to a particular material recovery facility or a composting pit if anything happens in between the waste gets mixed and that is the so much effort is gone into waste no so that streamlining is important second is from a technology perspective it's important to create some kind of visibility like mr tushar was speaking from a uh, from a national perspective but at a city level also there are people who are concerned about this i tell me there is not one indian who doesn't want to live a better quality of life and i think that ownership comes with data also so a cumulative of the systematic approach with urban local body as the front row front seats and we working with them to improve that capability and the expertise is the combination what hindari is and is the and this is the very very intrinsic effort required in every city in the country that is 4400 only so yeah so first point like uh, in the first round of conversation let, let's 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 be uh, about what i what has become clear to me is obviously the intent is there so we have this organizations corporates which might have uh, which some of their products have a cut throat competition on the shelves but they are sitting together talking about plastics and they're looking at say collaborations as well and as partnerships so the yeah intent is there of course uh, not just uh, the corporations as well as the government as as and the consumers as well who are buying these products now uh, consumers themselves do not really know primarily uh, about the segregation part even at home when i buy a nestle curd i don't know it should it go the shell should go i in the dry waste but it has got a wet curd in it so should it go in the wet waste so that's what mr kajuria probably you, you you can let me know later on probably now it's still because let's, let's keep it in a conversational mode somebody can raise hand and let us know like this is how it is uh and second thing that you mentioned is data we mentioned identification of plastics we'll have to figure out where is it how in what what state it is how it has to be used how it has not mm-hmm. to be eliminated do we have enough data available do we know how much of it is being produced across india how much is it, it, it is being recycled and how much of this data can be relied upon uh, so it probably you can mention in how, how what is the uh, steps taken by the corporates to identify their data as such has it been all identified has it been tracked so let me just say a few things on this ranjan uh, so i i fully agree with what suraj said i mean data is the starting point for it unless we understand this properly understand you know we we start uh, collecting this data on a regular basis we would never be able to find uh, you know adequate solutions adequate business models to manage this problem and in this sector uh, i'm not very old in this sector i must tell you i worked uh, extensively on air pollution side of things 
and in that uh, 10 15 years back the situation was very similar when when the data on air quality was very limited and now uh, you will see that uh, you know we all talk about aqis and what does it mean how it impacts our health and it changes the whole uh, dynamics and creates that political demand for you know action to be taken on ground a similar thing is required here which has to be more backed up by data and i think that is what uh, suraj was also hinting towards uh i mean basic data set the total plastic waste generated in india i doubt uh, whether it is 3.3 million tons or not i mean i mean that's the reported figure but uh, if if you take into account everything uh, and in all geographical regions of india i doubt whether this is a, this is the right number or not so the point is we do not have enough data points to make large decisions specific decisions we can take broad decisions at this moment right we know that single use plastics are are a uh, general in in general harm uh, provide harm to the to the environment so we can ban them we can think about alternatives but we cannot develop specific business models for a specific polymer to be eliminated or recycled in the system unless we know how much it is what is the market you are trying to develop uh, in a in a certain region so i think that kind of uh, data points will be required also on uh, on uh, generating awareness i mean uh, uh the concentrations of uh, air pollutant levels i mean when when you heard them first time you didn't uh, correlate it with your human health but the moment now you realize that you know it is it is going above 400 now you you tend to uh, put your masks on you put masks to your children and this brings the elements of uh, you know that concern uh, for your own health for others health so i think uh, data has a very big role to play both for management and also for sensitization of uh, different stakeholders including general public which is essential to create that demand uh, at the political level it will be interesting to know with the zone that i am living in like i get to know the air quality index of greater kalash area is this much and i should be wearing a mask uh, waste generated or the plastic was waste generated in this particular geography is this much i don't know how this data can be measured but if it's available uh, and it would urge the citizens as well to take some action that your area is generating this much plastic you got to work upon it uh, mr kachuria where should my dahi ka dabba go can you hear me yes yes okay so uh, yeah i i'll tell you about your dahi ka dabba but um, i think picking up from what we were discussing yes so there are quite a bit of learning at least you know i always make notes and by the time i think i finish i would have finished uh, two papers of my handwritten notes to be uh, learned from yeah. so there are couple of things really uh, sumit coming to your point you know we have learned along the way and as suraj said we uh, started this journey in 2017 so while there was a journey towards plastic neutrality using less virgin virgin plastic and so on and so forth one of the areas we were very cognizant about was that we as consumer need to know ranjan the question you asked and then we started looking at let's say consumer is able to segregate and this is what we learned from personal experience so you are segregating but when the uh, person comes to collect if that person mixes it all the effort which has been done at your end actually goes waste so in masuri when we started the pilot with suraj and his team we looked at right from the time when a consumer segregates so there were volunteers who were going uh, house to house literally uh, after uh, some point in time we also started to put qr codes to see you know which householders are segregating which are not and we didn't stop at two way segregating we actually did four way segregation and some of the things which we saw there were really amazing these volunteers will go with these files and to show what is dry what is wet what is uh, medical so they would actually give examples and they were very well done by so that was step one step two which was there is once it gets segregated and the waste worker collects it then what does the waste worker do with that again lot of training in fact we saw vehicles which were moving from one place to the other ranjan and the colleagues on the call one of the big learning for us was how much hard work the waste worker does i think in our living sometime we forget 
the most difficult job is being done by the waste workers are they recognized enough so with suraj and his team we said we want to put one of the key parameters for our program which is respect for waste worker recognition for waste workers so we went and every time we would go we would have lunch with them we will sort of you know recognize their work we would uh, sit with them and the stakeholders including authorities which are urban local bodies in some case all on one table take their inputs i remember one day we were moving in masuri and one of the waste worker said it's so difficult to actually lift these heavy things and like suraj said i can assure you if you were to walk with waste worker one day uh, you will need two days of rest because you go down and you go up and then we started looking at can we create a uh, bags for them where they don't have to work too hard so we found multiple types of tires and only finally the skate tires were the best fit now why i'm saying this is this learning then we replicated it in other places today if you were to ask me one of the biggest successes of project hildar in these six places i would put recognition of waste workers as one of the key areas because now when you go to talk to them and suraj can correct me they speak in a very different language and just for all of us you know once we have this leadership conference and we brought one of the waste worker to talk to the team and she started by saying uh, i hope everyone understands hindi here yes. sab mujhe kachre wala bolte hain kachra to aap log phenkte ho main to safai karti hu and after that we start stop calling them uh, waste worker they are the cleaning workers actually so that was learning number 1 second learning we all as consumers we want to do the right thing but how to do the right thing how to create that awareness so we picked up uh, dehradun in uttarakhand to do a pilot and we said how best to create awareness we said we will run a exchange offer so you come and give 10 empty packs of maggi noodles and you get one pack of noodles free now that created lot of excitement but what we did we actually got all stakeholders together so that we could go to schools we could go to colleges we could talk to authorities uh, we actually ran with the uh, newspaper editorials advertorials basically telling people it is good for everyone it's good for us it's good for the planet and so on and so forth extremely successful program and third learning garanjan sorry i'll take another one minute uh, we actually if you travel from dehradun to masuri there is a patch where you will see literally every few meters few hundred meters a maggi kiosk and we realized that the maggi wrappers were not managed well so we ran a plastic express there which would collect these maggi wrappers bring it back and make sure that it is recycled or upcycled now these areas have actually taught us a lot given us a lot of examples which we want to follow i'm not saying that everything which we did was you know super successful some initiative which we took uh, we looked at some some other cities decided not to go for that for various reasons right now it's in six hopefully it will go further but if we as consumers start the first step and if cleaning workers or cleanliness workers or safari workers if they were to actually make sure it doesn't get mixed in my view 50% of the problem is taken care of and once you take it to a to a warehouse where the segregation happens in fact uh, i remember once we went to see a uh, warehouse where all the plastic was coming in and the gentleman the supervisor there that day was very upset what had happened was he had kept dry one side wet another side and it rained and it rained heavily everything got collected so you know uh, end of the day i think there are lot of new initiatives which are going on uh, plastic is something which is becoming extremely important in fact if you were to look at even from a consumer lens which are the three areas consumers are really uh, careful about air pollution water pollution and no plastic pollution so to answer your question yes consumer awareness is the key and that is an area uh, 
we are working on not only outside but within our company uh, our employees participate in this a lot uh, when we run uh, on ocean day sumit will be very happy to know when we ran a volunteering program uh, in 13 different location over a thousand of our colleagues and partners came just to clean the place so it was in goa it was also in in uh, river banks and so on and so forth so as i said you know all stakeholders have to uh, chip in and suraj rightly pointed out uh, you know everyone is getting very concerned about plastic and program uh, uh, events like this ranjan can only take it forward thank you so much sanjay uh, my dahi ka dabba goes where i have not understood uh, i still do not know <laughs> uh, anyway yeah so please. ranjan ka dibba depends if you really clean it dry it it will get into a recycling bin for dry but if you leave some dahi in that then it will go into wet my request to you would be before you put it in the bin uh, clean it dry it and then dispose it off so can there be an alternative to that can dahi come in a package that i don't Sorry? know can there be an alternative to that can dahi not come in a package technology. that technology sir ranjan technologies are coming up and these technologies in fact there is now a lot of discussion going on paperization so you will see a lot of changes happening in coming times uh, technical see every time there is a uh, issue the solution start to get built up and very happy to report paperization is one of those so there is a possibility of having a curd being delivered in a paper packages or a cardboard packages most certainly that work is going on and uh, going back to the data points now uh, you mentioned maggi let's just take an example of maggi wrappers in hill areas now you mentioned there were drives going on you could collect all the packets that were there uh, have we actually tracked how much of maggi packet is going out there and how much is being collected not just in the hill areas like overall because it's one of the most consumed uh, across india so uh, so uh, sorry is gone oh that's what i want to understand primarily uh, do we have a data as such with us that this much of the packaging goes out for maggi we're just taking example of one product like i mean mean the whole product lines as such and this much of being is being identified or we know is being recycled or being reused and this much percentage or probably number is not coming back and it's like going either for the rent to the landfills or the or is creating pollution out so ranjan three three things really happening here one is uh, to make sure that the packaging is fit for purpose designed for recycling so that you know you you use the packaging which is easy to recycle more environment friendly in that respect so that is part one second is create awareness around the whole thing on the proper segregation which is what we do through project hildari and other projects thirdly very importantly make sure and again very happy to report that maggi is a plastic neutral brand now because the quantity of packaging post consumer plastic waste of maggi noodle packaging we actually manage more than that we co process more than that now if if someone were to ask the question that you know every single pack of maggi so let's say i say or tushar says that i withdraw 1000 tons it can't be product specific because then it would be literally impossible correct so the wish is and both tushar and me are partners in uh, a a uh, industry led consortium called we care every time we think of this that if every single individual every single organization company decides to pick up more pl- post consumer plastic waste than what has been generated the problem of plastic is over so and any we can raise an hand raise hand probably and just pick it up from there uh, oh yes gitanjali you already have raised your hand yeah. Uh, actually, I wanted to uh, applaud Sanjay and Dushar uh, in the uh, in the verbatim that when he said that we don't, you know, we as brand partner or you know brand owners don't need need to look at what what is the waste that is our or which has our name on it. I think what is important is how we together can be more brand agnostic in solving this problem. So the minute we start looking at okay, I'll do only my bit, that's where I think we defeat the purpose. so uh, i think that's exactly what we are also uh, you know uh, doing uh, from the uni- from the sunny universe side as well 
that the collection that we look at is, is completely brand agnostic because waste is waste what we need to do is get a you know get a solve for it rather than looking at labeling it as his or hers or mine and theirs so i think that's the larger objective which all corporates are you know working uh, working at and also uh, you know uh, since we were talking about segregation and you know uh, habits that we can inculcate i would actually uh, you know i wanted to share something that we have been doing which is uh, something which is very close to my heart as well which is uh, and th- these are topics you know which i just heard with mr sanjay talked about which are talked about and uh, suraj you know uh, looked at in terms of bringing systemic changes now uh, while we as corporates can talk about commitments and targets uh, which we can do but what we do what we can bring a change is i is in the consumer behavior because that is something which is most important like you uh, i mean um, a, uh, in you know on a more lighter note you were asking about where does where does my dahi ka dabba go these this is an actual burning question which is there in every household that we have right now now we at hul we have you know uh, taken up that target of doing that home to own a home activation where we have partnered with organizations like uh, UNDP and Zimbio now these are our change partners to uh, which we drive this kind of change where we go uh, we have uh, taken wards and we also talked about that we need to own some wards and work towards them so like in mumbai we have a uh, d ward where uh, our partnership with Zimbio is extremely successful where we go we have where we adopt housing societies go house to house uh, and educate them about segregation you know that what and this is then not uh, just by showing them this is also done through demonstration you know this is this is where your gila kachra goes this is where your sukha kachra goes and the most important aspect i believe is how we can you know bring value to this waste and that's why what we call it is is waste to value because unless and until we show that there is value in waste uh, you know we talked about all our uh, safai saathis who have been helping us uh, you know collect this kachra and get you know do this thing this is not going to happen because if they are going to do it for free that motivation is not going to be there there has to be a larger uh, benefit for them them also so uh, through this program what we when we partner uh, with these uh, uh, you know uh, health workers what we call them is that safai saathis that's the title that we have given them they are the they are our partners and they are the one who are helping us bring this change uh, and we call these centers as uh, swachhata kendras now this is something you will find as uh, there are uh, four such sub swachhata kendra where we do the drive in waste segregation itself now you will find uh, we educating the safai sathis about for polyethylene kya hai polyester kya hai uh, aapka hdp kya hai because har ek waste ka ek एक पर्टिकुलर रीसेल वैल्यू है तो जब तक हम वो नहीं सिखाएंगे तब तक बहुत मुश्किल है किसी के लिए भी यू नो टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हाई आई शुड बी इवन सेपरेटिंग इट आउट और दैट इज व्हाट वी यू नो वी डू व्हाट आर सब आर स्वच्छता केंद्र नाउ दीज आर देयर इन सो मुंबई इज द पायलट सिटी दैट वी हैव बिकॉज़ वी बिलीव इफ वी आर हियर वी शुड बी द वी शुड बी वर्किंग ऑन ग्राउंड एंड ब्रिंगिंग दिस चेंज अराउंड तांदी व्हाट हैव बीन द आउटकम्स ऑफ दिस अवेयरनेस आई एम सॉरी व्हाट हैज बीन द आउटकम्स ऑफ दिस अवेयरनेस इनिशिएटिव सो बिकॉज़ लॉट ऑफ कंपनीज स्टार्टेड डूइंग इट एंड आई नो ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट्स हैव नेम देम दैट दे पुल्ड आउट फ्रॉम देयर अवेयरनेस कैंपेन दे सेड वी आर स्पेंडिंग सो मच ऑन अवेयरनेस बट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे वी आर नॉट गेटिंग द आउटकम्स एस सच पीपल आर नॉट स्टिल सेग्रीगेटिंग एट देयर होम्स और दे डू नॉट हैव रिसोर्सेज और टाइम टू डू दैट सो हैव यू बीन एबल टू फिगर आउट व्हाट हैज बीन द आउटकम हाउ इट हैज इंपैक्टेड इन द लास्ट फ्यू कपल ऑफ मंथ्स प्रॉब्ली व्हेन यू स्टार्टेड हाउ मच टाइम इट डिड टेक so uh, what we actually tell them is that why we you need to segregate and at the same time we also show them what is the value that we are going to get out of it so uh, most of the time when we get these feedback so we give them forms to fill and get get feedback in terms of uh, from that uh, what do you call that from that ward collection center itself that whether now the increment in the dry waste has been coming or not now of course if i say that yes it has happened it will be my job would actually be done but that's not the case <laughs> this is a journey which we have we also find it difficult but this is something which we have strong belief in and that is why i said this is something which is needed to be done and so just linking to this thought is the thought that any sort of a change like this can also come in only when uh, the children of our uh, nation also start doing it 
and that's where there's another program that we have we call it as waste no more it's a basically a digital curriculum which we have started with zindio where we educate kids about the waste segregation the habits associated with it and why we should be doing it because i mean when my daughter comes back home and tells me mama you are doing this wrong that is where i think the change begins and that is why all these curriculums are now aired on dd channels they are a part of the ncert courses as well and slowly and slow uh, you know uh, steadily we are trying to increase this uh, uh, you know dissemination of uh, knowledge also wherever we are able to partner with panchayats we give them this curriculum so that they can also you know do this segregation uh, on their own also and uh, i want to touch up on the point which suraj mentioned that this can't happen with just corporates doing it this is where the you know the uh if i were to take the example of mumbai mcgm uh, partnership comes in extremely handy they are the one who help because we are not the one who will have the land we not the one who will have the you know the wherewithal it's only the collective effort that can bring this sort of a change and i'm extremely proud and happy that these kind of associations have been just sprawling you know uh, very, very very successfully it's very easy now to talk to uh, the mcgms and ask, ask them that this is the change that we want to do and this is their first priority as well. you know uh, lockdown yes. are the days getting where the point, getting the point here so it's like collective effort uh, so w- 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 what i mostly do is after the conversation i just try to pull out the keywords so it's here collective effort uh, awareness and of course you mentioned children the gen z yes. and the millennials are going to ask difficult questions from us anyway so they identify with the cause they know what plastic means or what pollution means uh, tejashree yes. you had your hand up uh, and then we mr kajuria a bit yeah so just uh, you know taking this point ahead uh, and i would uh, like to share uh, a very interesting story in terms of our own experience from this uh, as you know you know we have a large campus in vikroli in mumbai and which kind of houses around uh, if um, given take in a normal scenario would house around 50000 people just working in different uh, you know either staying on the residential area in the residential areas working on our commercial uh, areas or in the industrial areas etc and um, uh, so long time back not uh, in fact not after the plastic rules but uh, around 2014 we th- uh, we um, as part of extending our uh, corporate principle of you know diverting waste going to, into landfill uh, we thought why not make the whole campus zero waste to landfill and uh, it was you know the conceptualization of that whole thought on such a large campus was itself uh, uh, daunting and uh, it was kind of scary because it started with inventorization basically to understand how much is the footprint that we are generating as a multi use uh, complex and from there it began and uh, over the years uh, around it took us around 1 uh, and 1/2 to 2 years to really stabilize the whole system you know for collection putting uh, forward collection points getting it to a certain place in central location where we had processing of this waste and we realized that this campus was generating around 10 10 tons of waste every day which was going to the overburdened uh, landfills of mumbai and uh, we started with that and uh, you know, around it took us two years almost to stabilize but what we learned in the gen- journey you know uh, that uh, so this kind of creating awareness about uh, you know the whole waste segregation bit and how why it is required what we uh, our campus is a, was an iso 14000 certified township which was one of the first in the country um, uh, under the environment management system but when we went to the residents to say that please segregate your waste they used to say why should i segregate when you know after it leaves my house it again gets mixed into the same bin uh, by the collector and it goes off where i don't know so what uh, so the whole thought was we need to first put in a place for the end of pipe treatment and uh, handling of the waste and only then preach on uh, segregation and that's how this thought of making the campus zero waste landfill became uh, began and um, we learned so much in fact from the uh, real these uh, segregators or uh, the people who are going to work on real segregation of waste uh, so whatever you may say at the point of generation segregation there's still a lot of mixed waste which comes to such facilities and um, uh, what we decided was we need we need to have uh, people who are engaged who are actually working on the dumping grounds and uh, you know uh, really had no method of systemizing they did not even have their aadhar cards or any identification on them and uh, we kind of systemized them gave them this identification they get they get all those benefits that an industrial worker would get and at the same time what actually we learned from them is all the different types of waste just one plastic in how many different 
categories it can be segregated almost 17 to 20 categories of waste uh, uh, gets generated only in plastics from the households and uh, they taught us basically what are those different categories which category has a value for recycling which category doesn't have a value where it finally ends up and um, on this journey of last 8 years 8 to 9 years um, in fact we realized that you know whatever you do the segregation not all waste finally gets recycled there's still some waste which um, although it goes out of the campus ultimately goes and lands up in the landfill so you really cannot claim if that you are a zero waste landfill that's where we put in the you know, uh, point that no please tell us which is this waste which ultimately from one way or the other is going to go and land end up in landfill because it doesn't have a value for recycling uh, and um, then those were different categories which came out from uh, from these people they they actually taught us that these are the ways which ultimately will land up in the landfill and then we uh, tried to segregate that and uh, ensure that this waste is going for end of uh, life treatment through a co-processing with a cement plant and that's where since last you know two years we can truly claim that the campus is zero waste to landfill what i want to say is uh, in this you know there's a lot of learning which happens from people who are actually working on it. and we we may think that we are all technique then we qualified but they are and uh, uh, like i said we learned a lot from them another important point that i think uh, gitanjali also touched upon was educating and specifically the kids so we have schools in our campus and uh, we started we run in multiple programs one of them being kind of owning your own uh, plastic waste so you know uh, we ran this program with wwf in terms of volunteering uh, children who would identify how much of plastic basically they are generating um because of uh, you know uh, our consumptions and uh, patterns of consumptions and how do we take a targeted program in terms of reducing that so it starts with kids and they like she said you know they actually go and, and they are the change makers who go back and tell the parents uh, that uh, you need to change your ways of uh, working so the school is a very effective way of communicating you know i think i'll move to sanjay before that which we should do a separate session on bikroli because bikroli comes up as a model for all of our conversations that we have had in the past as well so it's like uh, uh, when whenever we ask for an example the bikroli comes up so it's like plastic neutral it's water positive it's uh, carbon negative so interesting uh, sanjay you have had your hand up yeah so maybe uh, we should uh, see uh, probably what all we can learn from that but a couple of points anjan i just wanted to supplement what gitanjali said right. uh, the our experience been project which we started in last year since for all we are nearing 80% segregation which uh, for a hill town is huge vision is to reach 100 uh, and we will reach that uh, at some stage but i think even 80 when you look at that terrain is not bad it's, it's actually very good so that is answer to your question ranjan which you asked uh, on the two more points actually again our learning see as part of our csr Uh, all all of us do a lot of projects what we have started doing is we have started integrating uh, plastic waste in almost all the program management of plastic waste so we do a lot of work with let's say uh, street food vendors so earlier it was more on food safety cleanliness hygiene now managing plastic waste is a very key element we work a lot uh, with our partner magic bus and we uh, work with adolescents close to 300000 adolescents now the module actually includes management of plastic waste as one of the area where we want actually students to know about it similarly when you adopt a village or do some other program hill there in any cases to to do with plastic waste management and so on and so forth so there is that is second learning and ever since we have started incorporating plastic waste management in csr modules we actually see the difference people talk about it now so when you go and uh, take feedback this comes as one of the areas where they are really interested in and uh, the last point i just wanted to make is again coming from our experience of last few years partnerships work amazingly so whether it's a partnership where we join hands with we care and or we work with the uh, hildari and sms 
or we work with other corporation or we work generally you know discussing these points today's meeting for example i think uh, all of us are going back with some new learning which we are going to implement so one of the areas where i think we uh, and i think it's our responsibility as corporate citizens to see how we can join hands with each other to see how we can scale up this program it's a it's a big issue but with all of us working together i think it can come under control thanks sanjay so uh, do we have any hands up yeah sumit no your dahi ka dabba is still stuck in my mind <laughs> about it all any other brand think about uh, a container which can go back and you ensure uh, hygiene and all those kind of issues but you don't create an alternative which can have some other impact i mean we can think about paper seal you know so several other kinds of uh, things but it may have you know impacts over various types of uh, environmental resources over the whole uh life cycle uh, of of that product so reusability is something which we may need to you know think more and more about and uh, you know another thing i i i'm just remembering when when used to have those charts at at uh, you know uh, at the corner of the streets we used to have uh, plates uh, you know plastic plates or steel plates to have those uh, you know tikkis and golgappas but now you you get these uh, single use uh, disposables uh, and in my opinion mainly because of hygiene related issues that you don't really want to uh, have those plastics or uh, steel plates which you are not sure about whether they are cleaned up properly or not now if you can ensure that that uh, you have uh, some sort of Okay. Some machines. Some interesting. Uh, just... So very well put, uh, Sumit. One is definitely food safety hygiene, which for a food company is always the top priority. And second is the life cycle assessment. You know, if you were to do that, what does it entail? You know, are we saving somewhere, and are we increasing the logistics? Are we increasing the uh, greenhouse gas emission? so i think it's a combination of many things but uh, as uh, as i said i have jotted down your suggestion as well to see uh, how how it can be worked out yes uh, ranjan uh, that's i know ki this is a very very interesting subjects and if you continue to this up to i like 10 o'clock so i'll we, everybody is engaged in this topic so i know the time because the discussion Question just I'm coming in a very very honest things which is actually because as Mr. Sanjay Khajuria sir told ki we are associated with the three of the association. It's not by one association. I have member of CII, member of FICI, many of the association. Why this picture is coming into the big corporates today? Whether it is a Hindustan Lever, Nestle, O, Pepsi, any of the big corporates, including Dabur, everybody is doing in their own way activities. Various things are going on in the market. but still if you see during the entire year if you go to any state pollution control board and central pollution control board any of the interaction with the government bodies everybody is talking okay this company is doing so much of epr but still the entire the we don't see any improvement in our states why these things is coming to picture that's why the every the first point which i told and told by everybody the clarity is not there just i'm giving a very small example like 15 days back i have interacted with one state uh, pollution control board chairman with some of the states so when i tried to give a plastic neutral company of dabar she is trying to do that okay you are doing so much of lifting plastics from my state but i am looking up the entire state is not looking good why these things is coming the things is the picture is not clear 
if i will ask any of the states if any of the states is operating any parts of the country they know how much plastic is coming to their states how many number of industries are there how many industries are registered under cpcb a cpcb under plastic registration how much plastic they have produced so these are the times when the picture will be clear then we will come to know that okay there are certain big corporates is working let's 40% or 50% of the plastic and rest of the 50 50% plastic is lying on the environment whether it is going to drain whether going to ocean because corporates can do it the strict rules and regulation and data clarity when you come into picture the other things will automatically taken care of and that is the real scenario in spite of doing lot of efforts by the corporates still people are saying the pollution is there pollution is there because it's the only tip of the iceberg it is not the entire ocean you cannot do it for these things so that a lot of clarity policy and very last point if you see the recent uh, 16th of february notification ministry of environment and forest still it in confusing the people it is not so simple all the states as it maybe people will take the big state like up madhya pradesh uttar pradesh uh, maharashtra and everything maybe in northeast but nobody will take care for that and somebody will come out from the northern in the state or oh, northern nobody is working here because the policy has to be very very clear and crystal otherwise these things will go on go on go on and definitely we are working everybody is working but the picture will not come out Uh, operation is success but patient is died at least that things will come into picture so with this uh, the time is very very short i don't want to elaborate but this is a very very interesting uh, so topic sir we are we are into last minute of this conversation so interesting very relevant points so you are again coming back to the data as such like uh, and it has to come either from the government it it has to only come from the government they have to track who is bringing in what and who is collecting how much and who is reusing and recycling and how much is going to the landfills or to the oceans right uh, and i hope and i'm confident that the picture will become very clear because the extension norms have come up there are new laws and regulations and government has started using digital uh, devices as well and we are almost all everything is almost connected uh, you know uh, instead of me making a conclusion in here so i want to bring in suraj suraj so you have worked with the government you have worked with the corporates and you have been like I, i in the beginning i said you have been able to connect several dots so if you look at if you look at it as a overview of the plastic space as such or the plastic domain plastic waste space uh, how do you see it as an individual who is working at the grassroots ab zameen se dekh rahe hain aur sabke sath kaam kar rahe hain i want to know uh, how do you see this picture uh, waste waste at the corporates how, how much of it will be managed uh, the data coming from the government how will it look like in probably a year or two from now and what is the larger picture that we are looking at 2030 i think the prominent piece would be accountability at the end brands are i mean it will be it is such an encouraging time right now brands are going deeper and working with the recyclers and ensuring the right kind of product material fit is happening i think earlier on brands used to only engage at the uh, at i uh, have at the converter level now they're coming down to cities and integrating supply chains i think that penetration and that ownership is visible on the city level itself and I, we are working pan india across multiple cities and i see multiple brands associating with us at the ground level I think one of the biggest pertinent areas that by 2030 I think that collection systems will become robust. What is the motivation for somebody to litter or put material into ocean or to burn it is when they are unserviced. The job of servicing is of the urban local body. We are in India, we understand this system requires a little bit of care, attention and capacity building. once there is a continued effort over the last over the next couple of years i think similar to what we see in indore or i can very proudly say what we see in masuri also and many cities that nestle has invested into we will see a very very strong revolution in which we will get accustomed to living in clean cities because every material there will be a value for it to be picked up so there is going to be a three part process that i see one is from the policy advocacy it will become crystal clear roles will be aligned 
Number two, from a sub, from a demand side, there will be a huge demand for recyclable material. So that there will be a pull factor in which every material type will des- get its deserved value, and the viability gap will, in principle, go away. Third is from a collection system. Urban local bodies will get the right capabilities, uh, machinery, and the right uh, staffing and the trained staffing. so that that process at the city level get eliminated and and i really hope this happens in over the next next 9 years but it is going there the last 4 years have been magical because when this conversation started in 2016 i was there and today in 2021 with this and that is the fun part they've invested into the science and i really am very very optimistic that all the stakeholders will come together and india will be a shining example for many many developing countries and developed countries to observe yeah that's my point great thank you so much suraj that was also a very positive note yes and what we are looking at in 2030 is it's, it's just not uh, so this entire conversation is under the banner of un decade for ecosystem restoration and all these aspects that we take care of plastic is obviously um, major element uh, everybody is working upon it and like we said corporates have the right intent it's was great to have india some of the largest corporations sitting together having a conversation and talking about partnerships and collaborations uh, and the interesting part that mr kajuria also mentioned corporate social responsibility so the responsibility uh, it's it's just not the csr mandate that has come from the government that we are looking at but we are also utilizing that as an opportunity to work on sustainability aspects of the economy, which includes the plastic waste management as well uh, we create a good yes. report out of this yes kidadil you have a hands up yes i actually i uh, wanted to just elaborate on uh, one of the points which suraj mentioned that you know uh, in terms of hope and uh, then what sumit mentioned that why can't we look at other alternatives to materials itself but Uh, you know, I have a very good example to share where uh, we started a pilot uh, for dispensing products. The way India used to dispense milk earlier, we used to we used to carry bottles along with us, get the milk, and not buy those packets. That's a model that we recently started piloting in Mumbai, and extremely happy to say share. Many consumers turned up with their old bottles to actually fill the packs on the machine and take it back rather than than buying a new bottle. Now. If that's not changed, then what is? So that's what I had wanted to share. Great point. I did. Kidanjali here. That it may, does make sense. Like it's again talking about going back to the basics. It used to happen earlier. Then the plastic came in and the things changed. A lot. Of, it's just not about milk. It was. It was a lot of packaging that used to happen around liquids. Yes. Uh, even the solids used to come in the. The jute bags and all which have taken place, the plastic has replaced them. So yeah, uh, there could be another session on the alternatives how corporates can get into the alternative right. and talk about the interesting. Uh, uh, probably going back to the basics and introducing those, but then uh, it's indispensable. That we have to we have to understand that plastic is indispensable. It's just not going anywhere. That's what was the subject of the discussion as well. So we have to look yes. at alternatives and then uh, also fo- continue to focus on recycle, reuse, eliminate what what can be eliminated as such, and continue to have these conversations. Sit together, see what we are doing. Look at collaboration opportunities, knowledge sharing, share solutions, talk about ideas. So that was the purpose of this conversation. Uh, We are seven minutes ahead of time, but that's all right. Uh, oh, not ahead of time. Uh, <laughs> we should have concluded by now. That's all right. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. <laughs>